everybody welcome. Thank you for being here today. Um, I want to just quickly share something the Lord laid on my heart. We're going to bring Tim up. And Tim and Jody, it's going to be phenomenal today. Have a great teaching, but just listen to this for a moment. Psalm 4610 says this. Be still. <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time. Be still. In a culture that does not teach being still. We teach. Yeah, look, I've got a shirt on right in front of me. The Lord gave this to me yesterday for the Bell, for me and for the church. Be still and know that I am God. Why? Here's the why of that. Because I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Exclamation point. Not you will be exalted because you're a good Christian and you did all the right things and it worked out. That's not what it says. It says, I, he, will be exalted in your circumstance. Why should we pray for healing, Mike? Because it doesn't seem to happen. This guy's got the answer. You got the answer, buddy? Why should we pray for healing? Woo, man, I can't wait for the young generation to come out. You guys hear what he said? No. It's a form of worship. Praise God. Did you guys get it? Woo! Thank you. Listen, why should we pray for these things? Because God gets glorified in your situation when there's a miraculous healing. When the doctor looks at you and says, I'm an atheist, I don't know what just happened. I can't explain it. Woo, come on now. Who gets glory? Not the doctor. Nope. Finally, right? Not modern medicine. The Lord gets glory. When you're going through difficulties and we pray for you, this is the body of Christ. We want to pray for you. Not because we want to get in your business. Because we want to see your healing selfishly, I guess, maybe not for you, but for the God, so He can be glorified and everybody around gets to see and goes, I want that in my life. Because that's what the body of Christ does. And that's what the body of Christ is. This word be still, I'm not going to go into all of it, all the exegesis or whatever, but basically, this word, what it means is to basically lay down. It means to stop striving, which is so hard for Western culture. We're not taught that. We're taught that if it doesn't work, do, do it more. Go harder, right? It doesn't work, right? Just try harder. This says don't move. Part of this word was supposed to be like lay down like to slouch in your chair. Part of it, believe this or not, part of this word, it means to be disheartened. Isn't that wild? Why would the Bible say be disheartened? That's part of the translation of this word. It means rest in it. Rest in it as Christ is a miracle in your life. So here's what I'm asking you to do right now. If you need to be still, if you need to slouch in your chair, if you need to rest so that you can receive healing, first of all, I'm going to be the first person to raise my hand. I need this. You know why I need this as a pastor? Because I can take this church in some crazy directions that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ or his gospel. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm saying I could do that. You have to pray for me to what? Be still. be still. I've got to pray for every leader inside this church to be still. You guys get it? We can't have ministries where people aren't still. We have to be still. Right? Everything. Worship team up here, Wednesday nights, people's homes, whatever it is. Be still. You got to be still. So how can we pray for y'all? You don't have to say a word. Hey, we can pray for you and let you be still for a moment. Whatever you need, my hands up too. Pray for me, please. Put your hand up. All right, guys. If you're not, if your hands not up, there's no problem. It's all good. But turn to somebody that has their hand up and let's pray for them. Is that cool? We're just gonna pray for each other. Lord God, there are request in this house today. Father, would your name be glorified? Would you answer the prayers of your people as they come before the cross? God, would you teach us to be still? Would you teach us to just be quiet? Would you teach us to be disciples? <laughs> to rest upon you and your power and not to have the answers. Would you help me not to have the answers? That we would follow you. We would just wait upon you. Would you heal bodies right now in the name of Jesus? Would you, would you bring physical healing 
spiritual healing. Would you heal marriages right now in the name of Jesus? Would you heal families in the name of Jesus Christ? Father, we wait upon you, and we are still. <laughs> Awkward pause. Just hang out with me for a moment, okay? Restore. 
all those R words that, that those happen here every Tuesday. Thursday, our worship team is meeting, mending, healing, growing closer together on Thursdays. That's our worship. And then we'll run it back again this um, Sunday, next Sunday, which is our week five. Tim and Jody will also be back for week five, so we're really excited about them. You'll get to meet them in a moment. Again, we do have a seven-week cycle. You can go and look at it on the back wall here, um, right by Tim and Jody. That's our seven-week lineup. Or you can go online, join our Facebook group, join our YouTube channel, so that you can stay in the know and stay connected in the flow of God here at Appointed Church. Um, May 18th, that is um, our Terrence's <laughs> fundraiser. Terrence is um, our media technician in the back. <laughs> Slash, slash, slash. She does a lot of other things we don't label here, but just so you can know where he is right now. Um, but we're doing a fundraiser for him at South House. South House, raise your hand. Um, at Steve and Sheree Simmons at South House out of Rust. Can get that um, address. It just throw out the address for me right now. 2650 36th Avenue Southeast. Okay, 2650 36th Avenue Southeast yes. in Ruskin, Florida. So May 18th, put that on your calendars. Food, fun, we're going to be raising money for Terrence to get a support dog, another support dog. So we're very grateful for him and want to be able to be a blessing. May 19th, to gather, it's going to be community worship of churches all over the Bay Area. They're going to be meeting at the Yingling Center, which is the Old Sun Dome. 10 a.m., worship. We are still going to have church here, but if you feel led to go into the community worship, please go. Some of our leaders will be going. But we want to also um, participate in that. Any birthday, anniversary? Yes, we are. Okay, let's hear about it. Yep, yeah, Rose and Chris, um, they just had their anniversary, yes. Yeah. Over 30 years. Come on now, we're talking about marriage, too, in this series. You're a triple threat, because it was Rose's birthday on Friday, their anniversary, and then Chris's birthday is tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
I'm very strong, but I'm speaking in the first person. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we, uh, we tried having kids for a number of years, like eight years or so, and then we finally did in vitro, and we got triplets! <laughs> Woo! Wow! <laughs> yeah, two boys and a girl, and they were nine months old, and I said, I'm what? <laughs> I was pregnant. Yeah. What? Doctors are practicing medicine. Yeah, yeah. So we have another one. He's a boy. And they're, now the triplets are 26. And Nicholas is about to turn 25. Yep. And um, so that's our family. Um, you used to be a firefighter. Man, smart people run out of burning buildings. I know. <laughs> and retired from that, he became a licensed marriage and family therapist. And so I told him he had to keep me happy because I was good. Um, yeah. So he had to keep me happy because I was good advertising for his business. So. That's right. That won't be happy. <laughs> anyway, and then I worked at IBM. I'm a geek. Loved it. I love all tech stuff. Um, Did you hear that, Terrence? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and then, what else? Anything else? Um, we live in an RV. It's kind of different. Love it. We live in an RV, not far away from here. Yes. <laughs> you can go on a scavenger hunt for our RV. Yeah. All right. I think that's okay. So, um, I want to say something to our single friends here, or our single in friends here. You're married. And you go, no, I'm not. I don't have one of these. Oh, but you do. You see, you have a husband. And your is pride. And let me confess something to you. It weirds me out when I think about Jesus being my husband and me being his pride. Because I'm not trans. So what's the deal? <laughs> bad life, bad life. We won't be back next week. Matt's going to be talking to the others. So, so the deal is... He really uses our marriages on earth to talk about his relationship with us here. That's really what it's about. So we do know about singles. We were single. We met each other in the singles. And then after we got married, a year after we were married, guess what we did? We taught the largest singles class in Idlewild history. You know, Fort God up there in Hillsborough County. Um, it was a huge class. It was like 135 people every Sunday morning. And we love singles. So please hear our hearts when we're talking. We're not just talking about people who are legally married here on earth. We're talking about hearts that are married to Jesus. Remember, if you don't know the answer, it's always Jesus. So let's get started. Do you know Priscilla and Aquila? Do you happen to know them? Because here's something really cool. In the first century, the woman's name never came first. Ooh, check this out. Yeah, my wife likes this part. Tell them, tell them why you like this part so much. Well, same thing. Because a lot of times women get you know, relegated to the bottom. And in every passage, it's Priscilla and Aquila. So I kind of like that. So we've got some friends that we talked to this morning who are going to help us out. They're going to read the passages to us that are about Priscilla and Aquila. There are four different passages in four different books. And Matt Palmer is going to be our first reader. Yeah. All right, Matt. Come on, Matt. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Acts 18, 1 through 3. After this... Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Yeah. Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Because he sailed, he had his hair cut off at Sincre 
because of a vow he had taken. They arrived at Ephesus where Paul of Priscilla and Aquila, he himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. <coughs> Greek Pris oh, well, that was that. Oh. That was really good, Matt. Okay, next up, Mike. Oh, there's the other one. Oh, I knew there was another one. We gotta talk about Apollos. Come on back. He's almost as famous as you. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. We would have hated losing that one. Mike, come on up, Nick. Mike's going to do Romans for us. Mike even looks like a Roman. Look at him. Greek <laughs> uh, Priscilla and Aquila, my co workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their own lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of Gentiles are grateful to them. Greek also the church that meets at their house. Thank you, Mike. Great job. Great Roman job. Jim, you got it, baby? Jim's going to do 1 Corinthians for us this morning. 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches in the providence of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord, and so does the church that meets at their house. Come on, Mike. Come on, Jim. All right, we have one guy left, Jeff. Come on up, Jeff. You're the closer. 2 Timothy 4.19 Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the house of uh, one Scythius. <laughs> I like Jeff's definition better. It's phonetic. That's the way I spell it. Okay, so, so now you've met Priscilla and Aquila. So there's four things about Priscilla and Aquila that we really like that we really think are good models for us. And here's what it is. Number one, they are together. If you notice, they're never mentioned apart. Um, so many other people in the Bible, it's just, you know, the husband's mentioned or the lady's mentioned. We don't know even who they're married to many times. What was Peter's wife's name? We have no idea who Peter's wife's name is. But it's always Priscilla and Paul. So I like that. They're together. Number two, they're purposeful. Their lives are not random. They have a clear direction in their life. They're hospitable. I mean, I love that so many times it's mentioned that the church that meets in their house and that they invited that guy back to explain the word of God more adequately. They were very hospitable. And that's something that I want to try to learn better because I'm not my gift. <laughs> but it is your gift as a church because you're going to feed us today. <laughs> And lastly, they are community-minded. It wasn't just about Priscilla and Aquila and Paul. I mean, they could have been a power-packed group and brought a policy and it would kill them. No. Everywhere they went, they created community. What I want to say about that is that, um, I don't know about the rest of you, but for us, we need community. We realize how much we need it. And um, for our marriage, 15 years ago, we got together with some friends, Lee and Marie, yeah. dear friends, and we met like every other week to pray for our marriages. That they made such a... <laughs> no, we needed them. No, we needed them. Yeah, we did. I think that was when our we were in our second season of counseling. So we've been through three seasons of counseling in our marriage. And, um, Spring? No. <laughs> we haven't made it to the winter one yet. Yeah. Hopefully... Our last one was really good, I think. So far, we haven't needed it. She's really good. Yeah, she was great. But um, we were in our second season of counseling, and they were so good to help us. So I'm not saying that community is all it. You know, maybe you will need counseling. On the, you know, maybe you'll need other sources. But that was such a huge help to us to get over some stuck places. 
And um, I think that's true, especially for singles, you know, to have that community where you can meet together and pray together and process, you know, what's going on in your lives. That way, we're not alone. Because it's not good for us to be alone. Yeah. It should be in the Bible. I'm going to look it up. So, um, this is the part where we appreciate Matt, we appreciate Jim, we appreciate Jeff, we appreciate Mike reading, but really, this is the time for us as a community. So we have some questions we want to talk about. And let me get rid of some religion for a minute. There's a lot of churches, like the church that I grew up in, where somebody gets up in front with a nice suit on and they're a talking head for 45 minutes. And by the way, if they talk really good, like my senior pastor Warren Wearsby was, yes, I don't mind listening in for hours. But that's not what we're going to do today. First of all, I don't have a nice suit. I have a Mary and Mary suit. And, um, and the truth of the matter is, we really want to hear from you. Now, I'm just going to put one caveat in. We really don't want you to teach us. We want to hear your hearts about these questions. So, where's those questions? Oh, Terrence, you're a freaking animal. <laughs> so, here's the first question. And if you say, I don't know where to go with that question, that's okay. Neither do I. Um, the first question is this. Is it reasonable to consider that they enjoyed relational safety with each other? And if so, how? And my wife is Vanna. She's going to bring you the mic. This is the part where we play blank. So we're talking about they being Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila. Yeah. Does anybody have a response? Um, in my opinion, they had to because you wouldn't be written in the Bible separately. Dude! So to have such a pact, to have that community that you create every time you're in a different place, you would have to, because that takes a lot of money. Thank you. Very good. Very good. What's your first name? Trey. 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 Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Trey. You got us up and running. Yeah. Anybody else? Trey's right. You know they lived in five different places. They lived in Rome, which is where a lot of Jewish tent makers would make a lot of money. Claudius said, see you, we want to be you. And he wasn't the first emperor to do that. Tiberius did the same thing. So they got kicked out of there. They went to Corinth, another money town, where you can make a lot of money making tents. And then Paul said, hey, you guys are bomb. Why don't you go with me to Ephesus? They went to Ephesus. From Ephesus, the deal is that they went on more trips with Paul. And after Claudius was dead, they went back to Rome. And everything was great, right? No. Nero burned the town down. And their house went with it. That's why that last passage you read there in 1 Timothy doesn't talk about the church in their house. It talks about the house of, sorry, Vanessa Force. Um, but they had hard times. But they had great times too. Uh, so let's go. Anybody else on number one? Relational safety is pretty important when you're in a room full of people that you're not sure if they're going to judge you or join you when you talk about marriage problems. Pretty important stuff. Second question. Anna, what do we have? Is it reasonable to consider that Priscilla and Aquila were making significant impact for the kingdom? And what sort of impact they were making? I heard somebody say, <laughs> That's what our Japanese realtor used to say. Territory, the living room is <laughs> Mike, you want to say more about that? Let's see if somebody else would like to say Okay. More about that. Does anybody else want to talk about it? I think it's safe to say that instead of just coming uh, uh, to somebody else's house, uh, them offering up their 
their own resources and having people meet and you know giving up their personal space, giving up their personal time, you know, doing house church, which we just when we, we come here these days and we call this church, that's that's not the way the church used to be. Yes. Church sure. used to be in the house. So that's really the thing to me is, is you know, it was very important to them to do that. Chris is right. It was very customary for Jews to have you into their home, and then you could stay for two or three days. After two or three days, you stink them. Lil and I open our home to people to come in, and we've been doing that for a good ten years at the residence we're at now. And what we realize is that the people that come in and the people that go out are. We're not in control of what they do when they go out, but we pray that while they're in, that they have time to grow spiritually and then do something magnificent for the kingdom that we don't even realize the impact of just opening our home and being hospitable to those that are seeking Jesus. And a prayer over our home when we built it, when the foundation was there, there were no walls or anything. Pray that it would be a sanctuary for those that are seeking Him to come and find peace. Yes. We will now hear from our sound tech, Terrence Parmarjani. What I think is interesting is that nowhere is there any sermons that they preach. There is nothing about a big campaign that they did or no songs that they wrote or, yeah, they served in the background and yet everybody knew them. So they were making an impact by their service. So good. Thank you. So good. What's your name? Rafi <laughs> Raphael, good to see you, Ralph. I hear you just joined the church. Yes. Maybe. I don't even know about this, but I'm um, up. Anyway, so I think the fact that they um, they not only opened their house, but they actually brought somebody that they heard speaking about the Lord into their house and they spoke to him a little bit more. <coughs> And it doesn't say they recommended him, it doesn't say they got mad, it just it says they taught him better, for lack of a better word. That's, what I mean. That's the best. So, That's yeah, just that fact, it's an added to Terrence, so there's no campaign or nothing, it's just love. So. That's so good. Such a good so fact, good. yeah. G. G. Mon. G. Mon. Hey. I think what you're reading in the scriptures is that they traveled. Oh. They traveled a lot, but they didn't just stay quiet, but they stepped in and stepped up to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Invite people in. Come on. Corinth, Rome, Ephesus. Purposeful. Purposeful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Boy, it's kicking off, baby. <laughs> I, I, I personally feel they made a significant impact because they did it together. Yeah. The togetherness, you know, so they, they spoke it as one. I think that's important. Good stuff. I like that, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so Lil, you see the impact? Here, get some of that, Lil. I did. I actually think um, they walked in the same footsteps as Jesus. Yeah. They went from house to house. And they brought the word. And they were together. And Jesus was with his disciples. He was always, he always had three. Yes. He traveled with the three. And so I think this is exactly the same thing as what Jesus did. So they were mimicking, actually, modeling. They found a great model. They did. They did. I like it. I like it. Great little. Great little. GG Raphael. See, I'm going to back this play. History of the early church says that there was never, ever, before or since a preacher like Apollos. As a matter of fact, in Corinth, one of the largest Christian communities, 
Apollos was considered the bomb. Everybody got measured against Apollos. The guy spoke 15 languages. I can't even remember English when I wake up in the morning. Incredibly impactful for the kingdom. Okay, let's do number three, Vanna. I'm just curious, what did that have to do with Priscilla Nicola? I'm sorry. Well, Raphael said, Apollos only knew the baptism of John, which meant he knew repentance, but he didn't know empowerment because he didn't know the baptism of Jesus. It didn't mean he didn't know Jesus because he knew the way of the Lord, but he wasn't empowered to do what a Priscilla and Aquila were until they sat down and as Raphael said, they loved him well. In scolding, they raised his game. Thank you. I am not on my A game. I've been sick for two weeks. Or what the heck? But um, uh, today, yesterday I started feeling better. Today, even better. So, okay. you know, praise the Lord for that. <laughs> Is it reasonable to consider that they enjoyed agreement about life, direction together, and what seemed to be significant agreements for them? I want to invite the ladies. Now, <clears throat> ladies, how important? Oh my goodness, Sandy. Did you see her hand? You see how important her hand went up. It's go time. Okay. Oh, yeah. I gotta be careful. My pastor's sitting next to me. So. <laughs> um, I can see where it's important that even though they might not agree on everything all the time, they could trust that the Lord is directing their path together to go some places that they have never been before. So, and that shows, because there's fruit. So, I'm done. I spoke. Carrie. Oh, awesome. Here. Go, Carrie. Go, Carrie. Don't make me nervous now. Uh, I think that always that goes back to the relational safety. Right? I think everything hinges on that relational safety because if you're relational and you are connected and provide that safe space with one another and then you <coughs> emulate that out, that gives people the chance to know and grow. And, and that's what they were doing. They did that in agreement. And, and look at all the things that they impacted and what they were able to do together. Because together we're stronger. <laughs> Your promotional checks in the mail. Good job. I smell a hand. I'm about to go off over here. They're just thinking, how do I want to say Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm going to use my, my uh, anima, my, my female side on this one. Can two walk together unless they're agreed, Amos says. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, but every time I think about the book of Amos, what do I think about? Famous. Amos, famous cookies. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be irreverent, but that's what comes to my mind. But Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together unless they're agreed? It's not actually a question in the Hebrew. It's actually an exclamation point. Two cannot walk together unless they're agreed. Exclamation point, exclamation point to cover both people so they're not blaming each other. Agreements are so big. Relational safety is so big. And agreements are so big. Hint, hint. We're going to be talking about that next week. All right. Last call, ladies, for number three. Okay. We got a lady. Well, one thing I was thinking about is that um, agreements um, don't naturally happen a lot of times, especially if you're strong-willed. Not that I've been doing anything about that. But um, one of the things that I noticed with them is they obviously were in agreement about um, tent making. They did that together about life direction, about bringing people into their home. And um, I think that makes a big impact. And I know for us, when we disagree, when we were earlier in, in our marriage. And still. 
Well, no, when we were early in our marriage, well, I think, yeah, we were great at this. Well, I would think that it was over. You know, it's like, oh, we're never going to come back into agreement. There's no way, you know. And every time the Lord will bring us back into agreement. He's been faithful. He has been so faithful. Even when we're faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself and he lives in us. And so that's something that um, now when we have a disagreement, I'm like, okay, God, this is kind of cool. What are you going to do? How are you going to, you know, you're going to, I know you're going to bring us back into agreement. And so it's, it's a different perspective, which is nice. How are you going to change that blockhead husband of mine? <laughs> All right. Last creeping question. Yeah, creeping question. It's like it creeps up on you. Especially the word community and believers. Is it reasonable to consider that they enjoy community with other believers instead of what you believe that? Trey. Trey, you're killing it, Rob. Killing you it. busted it open. I mean, yeah, because they kept doing it. It's kind of a gimme question. You're right. It is. <laughs> the sublime understated track. I love yeah, it. bro. They kept doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know, there's something to be said for what Trey is saying because a lot of us can start hard and fast. It's the finishing that is time. And they finished. Yo, bro. Oh, oh. I'm thinking, I guess. Uh, the birthday boy has something to say. Actually, I was going to say number three, but you were talking to winners. Oh, I wasn't going to explain it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to exclude the man. Uh, for me, it sounds like they were always together. So when my wife, I love having my wife with me everywhere we go. That way, I don't get in trouble. <laughs> That's what we were together. Smart were man, together. his wife is training well. <laughs> And I, is this time that I could share what the Lord spoke to me and to talk about? Oh, no question about okay. it. Okay. So this morning, um, when we were getting ready, there's not a slide for this because you know how God does that? He'll speak to you like right before you go somewhere and it's not up there. But um, those of us, those of you who know us have heard this before, so again, you can take a little nap. But those who haven't, and honestly, I want to ask that you do it a little different this time. So what I'm about to share is something that our third season of counseling helped us with, and that was connecting at a heart level. And Tim developed these three questions. And um, I was thinking this morning how uh, one of our kids went to a youth group at another church, and it's uh, the son of the pastor that he spends a lot of time with. Oh, fine. And the son was um, opening it up to the youth group and asking, and he started asking these three questions, and our son was like, I've heard those before. I know where those come from. You stole those. <laughs> you stole those. But um, they are free. Please use them. And the first one, and um, we'll have, maybe have a slide next week, but if you want to write it down, we'll just try to remember it. They're pretty or just easy. ask your wife to remind you. <laughs> They're pretty easy. Amen. <laughs> They're, the first one is how are you? And you can't just say fine. Does that mean freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotionally unstable? <laughs> so we're going to say, fine. We're gonna say, <laughs> say what we're really feeling. So that's kind of a feeling question. How are you? The second question is, what's big for you? And I love asking that for the first time to people because they're like, well, what do you mean? What, big in what way? That's the point. What is big for you? We're not going to define it. You are. So, um, and then the third question is, how can I join you? And those of you who know it, I would ask that you go ahead and do it this week. And uh, I want to hear some testimonies next week of how it went. And bonus, if you're married, would you find another couple to do it with? Thank you, little Jeff. <laughs> I think you've, yeah, already, I you've been pegged. <laughs> oh, well, they're tagging you. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. No. Hashtag. Yeah. So, and if you're single, find a friend that you can do this with. And um, it really is. It's impactful. It doesn't mean Can I speak to this? Yes, please. I, you guys are our go-to people. Um, we love you. Uh, I have used this so often in my just regular life. Um, in real life. In real life. Like, between Dan and I, like, 
But just last week, I asked a girl at work, um, and I just said, I said those th three things to her. And uh, she was like, well, my parents are about to go into a nursing home. My mom fell. And she just, like, well, we're not that close. Like, we're, we're friendly. We work, we're coworkers. Um, and so use this. Use this. It is amazing. People want to be seen, and they want to be heard. And when you, what's really cool is that when, excuse me, I feel like um, I have, because I've asked these questions of them, they ask me. Yeah. yeah. And so it breeds a culture. And yeah. so when I say, what's big for you? And they say, my parents and then, you know, all the things. And, and then later, a week later, they come back to me and they say, hey, what's big for you? And I'm yeah. like, look at how this is working. <laughs> and, and it breeds vulnerability. It breeds culture. And then people can, you can say to each other, regardless of your age, of your Marital status, it works, and it is so fruitful in your life because it connects you to people, and that's what we need, community. Aww. We will pay you <laughs> That was amazing. Checks galore. I would have said it better myself. Oh my gosh, yeah. Can you repeat the questions, please? Yes, the questions are, how are you, Mike? And you can't say, fine. Um, what's big for you? What really matters to you right now? And how can I join you in that, Sam? I'm going to be with you. Because that way, when I'm with you, we're not alone. Now, I know this is a marriage series, but did you kind of get the impression while we were talking that we were actually talking about people in general? Because we really are. If you're 15 years old and you're sitting in here, we're talking about you. Because you have friends, and sometimes your friends like you, and sometimes you don't like them. And that's the way life is. We really need connections with God and with others. Yeah. And God decided that this would be the closest human connection to his connection with us. We might want to pay attention to that one. So I want to take a minute, because Mike is so good at this. I want to take a minute so that you can have some thoughts and you can hear from God. Um, kids can make noises that they want to make, because that's what kids do. But I just want to take a minute, and it's 11.01, so at 11.03, Close prayer. But I just want to hear from God. And I want us to do it too. Father, thanks for reminding us that you made us out of the dust of the earth. 
but then you crowned us as your creation with glory and honor and made us a little bit lower than the angels. That's quite a promotion. But you know us well enough to know that many times we have dirt thinking. That we wonder about our marriages and we say, man, that is so far away from anything that I've ever lived or ever been. And that's probably the place where we want you to meet us the most this morning. We don't feel good about marriage. We don't feel good about our marriages. Would you help us? Would you encourage us? Would you allow us to see that you love us a great deal and that you want us to be with you and with each other? So do what you always do above and beyond anything that we can ask for in prayer or conceive of mentally. Allow us to be encouraged and strengthened that you're for us, you're not against us, and that you want to see our marriages, but especially our marriage to you, thrive. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you, Tim and Jody, for today. As usual, awesome. Can we have a round of applause? Yeah. Um, As everyone knows, this is Community Sunday, and I know that everyone's used to walking in and seeing all the tables set up, and we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, we have uh, Publix catering lunch today, um, and I, so I'm going to explain to everybody how we're going to do this. Um, before I do it, I just want to say it's good to see the house full today. I've seen a lot of faces I haven't seen in a while. Um, we are blessed with the presence of a bunch of girls from the Florida Academy of Performing Arts. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I was um, uh, being theater to have, but anyway, the, uh, so here's what we'll do. Uh, the food is set up over at Children's Church. Um, we did box lunches, so I'm going to ask everybody to get one box lunch. There's kids and adults over there. Um, I calculated how perfect it seems like, so I'm going to ask everybody to grab one. And then um, in the meantime, uh, some of the men, if y'all could help me stay in here, we'll set up tables real quickly. And then you can come back over and eat. Um, so please, I'm going to bless the food real quick and then uh, dismiss everybody to go get something to eat. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that was received today, for the teaching, for the questions. Um, thank you that we have a congregation that's ready to engage. Uh, Lord, we ask that you bless this time that we're together as we're breaking bread. Um, as that is part of what the first century church looked like. And we ask that you bless the food to nourish our bodies and bless the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, if anybody want to help with tables, uh, right here, please. Yeah, if you, you guys are willing to help, come on up here.